I'm Fraser and I'm an applied researcher based at the University of Strathclyde, so from a policy background, not necessarily creative. Although I'm originally from various wonderful council estates in Forfar, about an hour down the road from Aberdeen, just 20 minutes up the road from Dundee there. So my work looks at how we can bring the benefits of low carbon technologies and innovations into low income areas and households. So basically, how can we design policies that allow us to use things like uh, community energy, heat pumps, retrofit, et cetera, household solar panels as tools against poverty and inequality. And it's a genuine privilege to get to work on this stuff for a living, to help shape big, exciting policies like this, as I'm sure lots of you in the audience can, uh, can identify with too, right? However, I can feel uh, very out of place in these spaces, spaces like this one a lot of the time. So I'm from a scheme in Forfar. I grew up rough in pretty abject poverty, fighting all the addiction and violence and mental health issues and all the stuff that goes with that, that never, to be honest, never really left me either. So safe to say then, there aren't many people in the field of climate change generally who sound like I sound or come from where I come from. And that's not exclusive to academia or research or policy. That's across activism, uh, media, and my limited experience with the creative sector as well. So I think part of the reason that I feel out of place and many like me feel out of place in these spaces is because climate as a whole does have a pretty stark class issue. Now, I promise I say this with love, but the whole conversation, broadly speaking, is dominated by very well-meaning but very middle-class voices. And I think that's a problem. It's a problem for a couple of reasons, right? The first is obviously that the climate emergency isn't just happening to the middle classes, right? It affects everyone and working class, low-income, marginalized communities most acutely. So understanding and representing those experiences in climate spaces, for me, is important for, for that baseline reason alone, right? Following from that, though, the solutions that we design to combat the climate emergency won't just affect the middle classes either. If we want those solutions to be fair and equitable and prosperous for everyone, which is where I'm coming from, then we need to do a lot better to get everyone around the table, ultimately speaking. Now, obviously, big polar bear in the room, working class or low income groups are barely responsible for a single iota of carbon in the Earth's atmosphere, right? They live sustainable lifestyles already out of necessity, and we shouldn't expect them to carry the lifestyle change burden. They don't need to, I wholeheartedly believe that. They aren't driving kids to school in armored tanks, they aren't flying eight times a year, they're not drilling for fossil fuels themselves, right? So we shouldn't expect the people with the least means and the least responsibility to be saving everyone else's arses. That's fair. But that doesn't mean that we should abandon those people in the conversations because, again, the solutions that we design will affect absolutely everyone. And those solutions can't be equitable, can't be prosperous without at least some of those voices in the mix. Now, of course, point two, a lot of people from low income, deprived places, marginalized communities, maybe they aren't worrying about climate in general. I hear you scream through your monitor, partly because they have bigger fish of their own to save. But I think there's something else going on here too that has been touched on earlier. I think part of the reason that a lot of people feel like climate isn't their fight as it stands is because we've never actually reached out or represented those voices in the discussion. We say things like hard to reach communities, hard to reach spaces, but the communities and the spaces are there. We haven't made enough effort, I think, to get out into those communities. So we've never really prioritized anything other than the expert, the middle class viewpoint in the climate conversation from policy to arts to media to activism and everything in between. And that's partly reflective of socioeconomic inequalities, educational inequalities. But again, it's a problem. The emergency affects everyone and it affects lower income groups disproportionately. And the solutions that we design won't be fair, nor can we really mobilize the widespread political support that's necessary to pressurize governments to meet targets without a broad coalition of loads of different people around the table. So the solutions, just to wrap up quickly, the solutions need to be fair and equitable. I wholeheartedly believe that. And I think that means doing a lot more to get even a few more people from those backgrounds, backgrounds like mine and plenty of others that don't often get much of a look in into those spaces and conversations. So that means hiring people with lived experience instead of just harvesting their stories, speaking in normal human terms, telling those stories about the climate emergency and building connections that allow us not just to talk in those communities, but to let people from those communities, like Lewis was suggesting, read the conversation. So for me, there's no better space to lead on that than in the creative sector. 
Thanks very much for listening and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on it as well.